This is my first outdoor interview right here. Bro, we got the flowing streams and candlestick park seats right there. You got the young go hard kick and some hacks, man. You're interrupting our uh, nightly tennis ball cheddar cheese game. This is your quarantine baseball day 46. How did you become obsessed with minor league baseball? I just love like the idea of following prospects going up the ranks. You know what I mean? Look, it started when I was younger. I was subscribing to cool. Baseball America. So like top 10 prospect lists, I was all over that. It's like getting into a band before they're famous. Well, I remember a couple games I went to, minor league games, like San Jose Giants, for example. Yeah. And, and, and to, just to be able to see some of those dudes and then all of a sudden end up in the big leagues, it's like, wow, okay. I saw Pat Burrell, uh, Michael Barrett, A.J. Pierzynski, C.C. Sabathia, Josh Beckett, A.J. Burnett. I mean, I saw all these guys come up through the minor leagues, man. And then to see them become all-stars is the coolest thing. It's quarantine times. Everyone's locked in, watching movies. I rewatched Moneyball recently. It's like my Star Wars. You played on those Moneyball A's back in the early 2000s. What's your take on like the acting performances matching up with the real world? Philip Seymour Hoffman as Art House. Did he nail it or what? You know, I, I have... Uh, very uh, unique perspective, obviously, you know, having lived it and then, you know, seeing the movie. Um, a lot of people felt like Philip Seymour Hoffman didn't do Art Howe justice um, in, in almost the sense where they made him look like a chump. Now, I see I disagree with that because I thought Philip Seymour Hoffman held his ground against Billy. And that was like one of the most difficult things in the world to do is you're taking on brad pitt right and that that was kind of like what it was like taking on billy in real life too whenever you're gonna have any sort of dispute with them but philip sewer hoffman you know who was playing art how he never backed down to art if anything it was like yeah man the guy stood up you know for what he believed in and you know if you remember one of the things was was that he, he traded carlos pena he's like you just traded carlos pena you're crazy Carlos Pena had a way better career than, than Hattie did, and I love Hattie, and, you know, obviously had one of the most iconic moments in Oakland A's history, uh, but as a player, a lot of it was really true, like the analytic stuff and teaching us about, hey, look, like, this is, a, this is what OPS, no one knew what OPS was back in 2000. He's like, look, this is a number that you need to focus on. This is the one we want to see above 800 was, was, was their number. He's like, look, you get there, it's kind of a... Um, you know, really good everyday player sort of uh, number to be able to focus on if, if, if you want to play every day, which obviously I did. Um, you know, there's some things like the Pepsi machine. Dude, no one, we weren't, we weren't buying sodas out of a Pepsi machine or anything like that. David Justice, I thought, was, was portrayed pretty well because he wasn't really having it. He stood up for the players and he was kind of the player representative of that team. The one thing that you know, a couple things they left out. Obviously, our pitching staff was unbelievable with Zito, Hudson, and Mulder. I think for the most part, you know, lottery of that team was was what made it so special. And, and to win 20 consecutive games, did we go out at night? We'd have 23 out of 25 guys out. That that's that's what made that team special. And um, yeah, it's it's a little weird watching. I actually really, I've watched it three times. One, uh, maybe a couple years after it came out. I, I you know when it first came out, I did not watch at all. Really? And then uh, the second time was probably a couple years ago. And then just recently I watched again uh, when, when it came on. So, um, you know, all in all, I think it's, I mean, it's a great story. I mean, I think they do a, a, a pretty, pretty damn good job of telling it too. Oakland has that great baseball heritage where you're one of the 50 A's players of all time. You made that team. Yeah. I mean, that's, it goes to show you that it's not necessarily uh, what you do, but it's how you do it. Looking back on my A's career, I'm sure there were a lot of guys that, had a lot better numbers than um, I did. I didn't dive into it too deep, but I, I the one thing every time I took the field um, was I busted my ass and I, I gave I gave that organization absolutely everything I had, and you know I think the fans appreciated that. So when it came to um, them having the vote, um, they were at A's players. Um, I was you know completely humbled uh, and obviously honored to be on that list. I'd put you on the all-time 50 Orioles players, too, Bernsey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, something, something tells me I'm not going to get on that one or the Rockies one either. <laughs> Isolate Night with Scott Rogowski, live every Sunday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern.